And how's it going guys, Joshua Lefebvre here, live from LA. And in this video, we're gonna be hearing from one of my favorite people. I call him my equipment mentor, John Ross. This video is two of three in a video series called Learning Exposure with John Ross. John is the one person that I go to when I have a technical production question of any kind. He is the sole reason that I even have the camera that's filming me right now, the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. He runs an incredible production company called Subplot Entertainment. You guys gotta hire his crew. Now let's take a quick drive down the 101, down into the San Fernando Valley, where our bro Devante has allowed us to shoot at his casa. Thanks Devante. John, the floor is yours. Hey everyone, in my previous video, I covered everything you need to know about ISO in part one of my exposure series. If you haven't had the chance to check out that episode yet, you can do so by clicking the card right here at the corner. Now that you're all caught up and you've learned about ISO, here's another aspect of exposure. Shutter. What is shutter? What does it do? Well, a shutter is just that. It shuts. Okay, so there's a little bit more to it than that. First, let me briefly explain how a camera works. Every camera has a sensor. That sensor absorbs all the incoming light that the camera lens is pointing at. The light essentially burns an image into the sensor, and that sensor interpolates that data into either a picture or video frame. So for instance, if the shutter never closed, you would be getting a constant stream of light and the video would be overexposed and it would just be white. The shutter's job is to open and close to allow a certain amount of light to hit the camera sensor. The speed at which the shutter opens and closes is called shutter speed. That's why shutter speed is measured in time. Depending on the camera, shutter speed can range from being as open for as long as something like 30 seconds to as short as something like 1 8,000th of a second. The faster your shutter speed, the less motion blur you're gonna end up having in your image, and vice versa. For example, if you're shooting something that's very fast, like a race car, you should have a very high shutter speed. The slowest shutter speed that I have available on my camera is something like 30 seconds long, which is a very long shutter, and you would only use that for something like time lapses, astrophotography, or like if you're trying to be creative with like light streaks. Okay, so if I'm trying to shoot something fast, use a high shutter speed, and if I'm shooting something slow, use a slow shutter speed, right? Not exactly. Shutter also changes how bright your image is. The amount of light your camera sensor absorbs determines how bright your image is gonna be. Unlike ISO, where it's digitally enhancing the sensitivity of the sensor, shutter speed changes the amount of light that hits the sensor. So technically, you're not getting any changes in noise levels or dynamic range just motion blur. So if you're filming a movie, unless you're going for like that high shutter Saving Private Ryan look, the rule of thumb is to set the shutter at double your frame rate. So for example, if you're shooting something at 30 frames per second, you're gonna wanna set your shutter speed to 1 60th of a second for normal looking motion blur. If you push the shutter too high, it starts looking a little too crisp and too sharp. If you push the shutter too low, it starts looking a little dreamy and kind of like someone drugged me. Now, one thing that I love shooting a really high shutter with is high speed videography. So if I'm doing any slow motion, anything higher than 60 frames per second, I personally like to crank the shutter really high to get that crisp motion smoothness. So that's basically shutter. Now that you understand what ISO and what shutter does, the last pillar of exposure is probably the hardest to explain, but we'll get there in the next video. I'll see you all in part three of this series where we talk about aperture. Thanks so much, John. You are so freaking talented. You can check out John's Instagram here and his website here. And remember, you gotta check out all of the videos in this exposure series. All the links are in the description. Thanks so much for watching the video, guys. I actually have two additional videos that you've got to watch. And remember to get your free month of Envato Elements by clicking the link below in the description. And lastly, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And as always, remember to keep it chill.